Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Kahapon, ang ating Ibanghelyo ay ang genealogy no, ng ating Panginoong Jesus. Now, one of the main purposes of Matthew's Gospel, which was written for Jewish Christians by Jewish Christians, is to show continuity of Jesus in the history and tradition of Israel. Pinapakita doon na may mga ancestors, mga lolo't mga ninuno ni Jesus. No? May, may continuity. And pinapakita sa atin uh, ang, ang kanyang um, history sa pamilya ang kanyang, in short, ang kanyang tahanan. No? Our family is our home. And I think this is precisely what St. Matthew, the writer also of today's, the evangelist of today's gospel, would like to do for us. To bring us home. To bring us home. Home to the real meaning of Christmas. Home to the most magnificent truth in the entire Bible. Home to our Lord's greatest promise. Home to the reason we celebrate Christmas. That is, God is with us. Matthew tells us that the greatest revelation given to us by Jesus Christ is the truth that God is always present to all of us. Emmanuel. We are given here an advance notice of the good news of Christmas. That the Son of God became man because one of us, uh, that the Son of God became man, became one of us and is with us. At upang ipahayag at ipaliwanag ito sa Ebanghelyo, yung kahulugan ng Pasko, gumamit si Matthew ng isang salita. At anong salita iyon? Emmanuel. This is what Jesus is about. He is Emmanuel. God is with us. Alam ko, hindi pa Pasko. No? It's not yet Christmas. It's still Advent. No? We are still in the fourth Sunday of Advent. However, we already anticipate, we already celebrate the promise and message of Christmas. The impact of this Christmas promise is incredible. When we believe, no, when you believe that, when you accept that, and when you claim that promise, it will absolutely change your life. Papaano? Three points. First, we can claim the great promise of Emmanuel when we are afraid. Kapag tayo'y nababalot ng takot. Kapag tayo'y nababalot ng mga pangamba. All of us are afraid at, at different intensity or degrees sa buhay natin. We get worried, nangangamba tayo, we get anxious about the future. And the Lord constantly tells us, palaging sinasabihan tayo ng Panginoon, do not be afraid, huwag kang matakot. Do not worry. Do not be anxious. Wag kang mangamba. 
Do not let your hearts be troubled. No? Ilang beses natin yan maririnig at mababasa. He speaks like this often. No? Madalas sinasabi ito ng Panginoon upang mapanatag ang ating kalooban, upang mawala, mapawi ang takot na nasa puso ng mga taong mga mahal niya. Second, we can claim the great promise of Emmanuel. Una, kanina, kapag tayo'y nababalot ng takot. Pangalawa, kapag tayo'y nalulungkot. When we are lonely, all of us experience loneliness in various stages of our life. We are lonely due to being separated from our loved ones, nalulungkot tayo dahil medyo malayo tayo sa mga taong mahal natin o sa pamilya natin. We feel lonely due to break up and estrangement or, or pagkawatak-watak ng pamilya, pag-aaway-away ng isang pamayanan o isang organisasyon. Nalulungkot tayo dahil minsan hindi tayo naiintindihan ng ating kapwa-tao, ng ating pamilya. It is in such moments of loneliness that the good news of Emmanuel have special meaning, have special relevance. It is in our loneliness that we can claim the Christmas promise of God's presence with us. Ang pangatlo, we can claim the great promise of Emmanuel when we are in sorrow. Perhaps a lot of things are making us unhappy or sad. Lahat ng pangyayari sa buhay natin sa panahon ngayon. Disappointments, frustrations, failures, lack of fulfillment in the different aspects of our life. It is in these situations that we must hear na kailangan buksan natin ang ating puso't isipan upang lubusan nating mapakinggan at malinaw nating makita, matanaw that God is with us in our pain, that God is with us in our suffering. Our God is Emmanuel, a God who has chosen to be with us, no matter what. Alam ko po na maraming magtatanong, maraming magsasabi na, Father, ang hirap naman paniwalaan na andito yung Diyos sa karanasan ko ngayon, sa karanasan ng aking pamilya. Para asa ng Diyos? Huwag nating hanapin dahil ang Diyos ay nasa atin. Hindi lang natin malinaw na maramdaman at makikita dahil oftentimes, no, kadalasan, we are clouded with worries, with anxieties, with ambitions. Kaya natatakpan Iba yung ating priorities sa buhay. And so I think it is a good thing to do parang bawat isa sa atin to identify kailan li natin, ano ba yung mga bagay, ano ba yung mga worries natin o lahat ng bagay na kumbaga nakapagtakip, no? the covered our sight and our feeling from recognizing God who is with us. As soon as we call God Emmanuel, God with us, we enter into 
a new relationship of intimacy with Him. Pero hindi natin ito magagawa kung hindi natin priority ang Diyos. Kung hindi natin, eh, kung hindi ang Diyos ang pangunahing nasa isip natin, ang sentro ang palaging iniisip natin, ang palaging nasa puso natin. It is hard, but once we recognize it, once we set aside, pag, kapag tinat, tinatabi natin ang ating mga worldly cares, ika nga, even anxieties, then malinaw natin makita at ma-recognize ang Diyos. He is with us. God is with us. And we can enter into an intimate relationship, an intimacy with Him. So we recognize His desire to encounter us at every moment of our life. 